All right, hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and apologies for not really being with it. I seem to have unlimited quantities of free time up until we get to CPI and FOMC, and then life seems to get in the way a little bit. I'm getting married in August, and so I've had to go to the wedding venue, sort some stuff out there, meet the planner. I also had to go and get a suit sorted yesterday, and I don't live anywhere near a suit shop, so I had to get in the car and mission across the country for that. Anyway, we're back, and... Ultimately, it doesn't really matter, right? Because as I always say through FOMC, we've got to let the dust settle. We've got to figure out what's going on. I think the cycles tell me that we know what's going on with quite high levels of confidence. So I'm going to get to the charts at the end. I'm going to go through everything. To be honest, nothing has really changed. So I'll just reiterate that now. If anyone's kind of panicked or worried or like, for me, nothing has really changed. We still got to get into the end of the month. We still got to find those cycle lows. And then it's time to learn something. Then it's time to learn whether the melt up is really really possible or whether we're going to roll over it'll also be time to find out whether bitcoin has got a shot at putting in its top this year and changing the four-year cycle structure or whether it's going to base and go sideways and we can just scratch that idea off completely and move towards saying it's likely we're going to have to move back to a four-year standard cycle shape so we're going to cover all of this first i wanted to address a quick question for you and that question is why does Camel's channel only have 1.2k subscribers when the content is so on point? Well, thank you, first of all, for these kind words. Big shout out to the channel OGs. You know who you are. And of course, the triple OGs. You certainly know who you are. But I kind of wanted to point this out, mostly for entertainment, but there's also some truth in what I'm about to say, right? This channel could certainly have more subscribers if I changed a few things about it. So if I was the type of YouTuber that posted crypto thumbnails that said the next thousand X gem, and then I told you I'd bought 100k's worth of some altcoin, right? I would probably get more subscribers, I'd probably get more views. But we don't do that here. If you've got a bag of altcoins, all credit to you. Everyone is entitled to do their own thing. But it's just not for me personally. And the reason for me focusing solely on Bitcoin is simply because there's so many altcoins out there. And I personally believe most of them are solving problems that do not exist. I also, from about 2021 onwards, have been operating under the assumption that most of these altcoins are going to be gone in the future. I don't believe we're going to be, I mean, we've got, what, 20,000 plus cryptos out there. I don't believe we're going to end up with any more than 10, 15, 20 at the absolute max. So that means almost all of them are going to be gone, in my opinion. And so because of that, do I want to take my chance trying to pick the top 10 or the top 15 cryptos out of 20 plus thousand? Or do I just want to focus on what has already proven to be the best performing asset in decades? And that, of course, is Bitcoin. It's also the most decentralized, the most ethically sound, the hardest form of currency on the planet. So I tend to focus on Bitcoin. Now, that is not to say that anyone that does altcoins or is into that stuff is wrong. You know, there's plenty of people. I know a lot of you on this channel. I know at least a couple of you made serious money trading that Pepe meme coin. So pat yourself on the back because the only people that are able to do that were very, very high level traders or investors. Most people that bought Pepe got wrecked, right? So there's not to say you can't make money in this stuff. It's just for me personally, I prefer to focus on ethically sound money, to focus on the number one cryptocurrency protocol on the planet. And so I think this is the first contributing factor for why the subscriber count is down lower than it could be. The second point I wanted to make here is I deliberately keep this channel slightly more advanced, right? A lot of people often reach out to me and they say, can I do a total beginner's guide to Bitcoin? Or can I do a complete beginner's tutorial or an introduction to trading? Can I open my trading terminal and show you exactly how I place the trade? And I deliberately shy away from this. I stay away from this sort of practice for a number of reasons. First of all, there's so many people out there that just want spoon feeding. Now, this channel already shows you all. I don't know any other channel that does what I do. I call the positions out ahead of time. I show you when I go long. I show you where my stop is. I show you when I exit the trade. I show you all of my mistakes, as I'm sure you're well aware. So I'm already giving away what I think is enough for people to learn from, from people to incorporate or for people to use as just one side of the argument and then go away and collect a bunch of other different opinions from a bunch of other different people before ultimately forming their own opinion. So I deliberately keep this channel uninclusive, right? You have to have a certain level of financial literacy to get on here. And I know this is fact because often my wife-to-be will show one of her friends the YouTube channel and they'll say things to me like, oh, Camo, I watched your channel. Yeah, I didn't understand a word of it, but you sound cool. You sound professional, right? 
that goes to show that if you don't have any financial literacy whatsoever, then you're not really going to be able to understand the vast amount of the content on this channel, which is, again, it's deliberate. It's not inclusive because I don't want people here that want to be spoon fed. Now, if you are a complete beginner, you can certainly take a lot away from this channel. If you're a complete beginner and you're willing to pause the video when I say something that you don't understand and go and Google that term, then you can still do well here. If you want to put in the work and tune in every single day and see how this is done in the real world, then you can certainly, as a complete beginner, learn from somebody that does this full-time professionally. But I get it all the time. People, can I, ha can I open a copy trading service? <laughs> no, I can't. And the reason for that is simple. It, that's unethical. It's, it's unethical. I know how to manage risk. I know how to hop in and out of trades. People that are copying my trades, they don't know how to manage risk. And if you don't know how to read a chart, if you don't know how to come to an invalidation point off your own back, if you don't know how to manage your own risk, then even if you're copying my trades, you're probably still going to lose money, right? I've deliberately kept this channel to a nice, small community of people that actually enjoy putting in the work, that actually have a vested interest in self-improvement and self-development, who actually want to improve their quality of life through their own hard work and study. And I'm incredibly proud of the small community that we have built here. I know everyone here puts in the work. I know everyone here is very, very skilled at what they do. And I know that those that are very new to the space, but are still here, they have the right attitude because they are putting in the work, they are studying, they are striving to be better rather than asking for handouts and, oh, can I just give away my trades, <laughs> right? Like I said, you're not going to make it. You need to know how to handle your own money off your own back. So I hope that answers your question. Why do I have so few subs? Well, it's because not everyone is cut out for this. This is the real world. This is how real trading works. This is exactly what real world trading looks like. And the facts are the facts. Not everyone is built for this. Not everyone is going to make it. But for those of you that are here, for those of you that put in the work, I'm sure you benefit greatly from having a winning attitude and being able to apply that in your own investment and trading life. So with all that said, let's get into what we missed yesterday. What we missed yesterday was the Federal Reserve finally paused its interest, interest rate hikes. So we had a very hawkish pause. There was a lot of hawkish language coming out of the Fed. And they even signaled that there's going to be two more rate hikes to come. So that's fine. That's absolutely fine. And why do I say that? Because it's cutting rates that historically causes bear market declines and massive downturns and triggers recessions. It's not usually continuing to hike rates that's the problem. They've been hiking rates and the market has been going up in a near straight line since October, right? Since October of last year, we've been making higher highs and higher lows in the face of continuing to hike rates. So I don't have a problem if we see more rate hikes. I'm personally not in the camp of people that believe there's going to be more rate hikes, but that is of course to be determined. I've got the highlights and the most important parts from FOMC here. They said the banking system is sound and resilient. So we know that to be a lie. We also know that likely the reason the SEC is going after the likes of Binance and Coinbase and trying to slow this space down is because they can't afford to have people withdraw their money from the banks and move into crypto. They can't afford for that because the whole system will implode, the banks will all collapse. So they need to slow this thing down to buy themselves time to slowly introduce cryptocurrency rather than have a massive flight of capital from the banking system, which is anything but sound and resilient. The Fed also said it's going to continue the same pace of reducing Treasury and MBS holdings. So it's claiming to do quantitative tightening. Of course, depending on the metrics you use, it doesn't really seem like we're actually experiencing tightening at the moment, and the market certainly isn't behaving as if it's being tightened. The Fed policymakers see higher GDP growth in 2023. I have to call BS on this, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm flat out wrong about this. I just don't see that the case. I see them announcing that we're actually in a recession by the end of the year, but that is to be determined. They think a lower unemployment rate and less progress on core inflation than they saw in March. The Fed officials also see the Fed funds rate at a median of 5.6% at the end of 2023. So it tells us we could well be in for another 50 odd basis points of hikes. Again, I kind of lean towards calling BS on this one, but that is to be determined. They also said that holding rates steady allows assessment of policy impact. So are we seeing a data dependent Fed? Is that what this is? Is this just a, a quick pause to evaluate and see if CPI comes down? CPI should be down on a two handle by the next readout. Right? There's a very good chance we're very, very close to 2%, if not at 2%, at the next CPI readout. So perhaps what they can do here is claim victory by moving to a pause, waiting for the CPI to come out, CPI's on a two-handle, and they say, ha-ha, mission accomplished, we got down to our 2% target, we don't have to continue to hike rates. That's kind of what I would expect to see, but of course, as always, we're open to all outcomes. The Fed officials see GDP at 1% in 2023 and 1.1 in 2024. Again, I don't see that. I think we're going to enter a recession at the end of the year, but 
we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. The Fed also signals additional rate hike increases possible later this year, as I kind of already covered. The FOMC vote was unanimous, 11 for zero. So happy days, I guess. And the median rate forecast rise to 5.6% by the end of 2023, 4.6% at the end of 2024. I think this is just, like I said, over and over again so far. I think this is nonsense, but as ever, we'll take it one day at a time. Bitcoin, its correlation to gold is now at 75%, which is the highest it's been in over two and a half years. It seems to be decoupling from the stock market. I know a lot of people that watch this channel are worried. I know a lot of people think that perhaps the stock market is going to roll over and Bitcoin is going to dive with it. We'll get to the charts in a minute. That's not what the cycle suggests. We've got a new all-time high of just under 15% of Bitcoin that has not moved in 10 years. So look at this 10-year hodl wave. Many, many people, if you held for 10 years, you're up massively, right? And these people still don't want to get rid of their Bitcoin. So that speaks volumes, I think. Just before we get into the charts, you know I'm about to show you a sideways 60-day consolidation cycle for Bitcoin, especially if you've been here before. And I've been saying over and over again, markets have this way of wearing you out before unveiling the true direction. And you can see people getting worn out. Done with Bitcoin, this price is stupidity on the highest level. Why can't we just pump already? And it's because we're in a 60-day consolidation cycle or a 60-day cycle. Maybe we've got to drift lower into that cycle low. But viewers of this channel know for sure that... We're going to continue down into this cycle low. We're not really going to be able to do anything until we come out of this cycle low. Now, whether this cycle low forms where I've got it, maybe this is a wick that pops back up and rolls over, or maybe it comes down and forms slightly lower. Maybe we do something like this, quick wick and go. We still know that we've got to get into that 60-day window before we can really consider moving up. Now, I do think we are going to move up, as I've been saying over and over again. I don't think this is unhealthy. We are currently wicking the breakout of the range in yellow. So daily closes below that get somewhat alarming, but as long as we're above this red up and sloping support line, it's not really a big issue. We of course had the Hinman emails come out and like I kind of alluded to already, the Hinman emails, we already knew the situation, as I said before, we kind of already knew what was in them. And therefore, I think this is why we didn't pump. I mean, we kind of already knew what was in there. It's not really a big deal. XRP closing below this range. So I'll let the stop do the worrying on this one, but it kind of suggests to me that since we've lost this range, we're probably gonna have to pay a stop, work our way down here, and then we can talk about breaking out, which was my primary expectation all along. So we'll see how this goes. For now, I'll continue to push this trade because there's nothing to say this won't reverse. But given where the cycle is for Bitcoin, we have still got a couple of weeks before we can think about making that cycle low. So possibly a couple more weeks of chop ahead for the crypto market. Here's the dollar. Still looks heavy, doesn't it? Still kind of breaking out. I mean, by now, we could probably adjust this up here, connect this wick, this wick, and this, and we're kind of getting a rejection. Maybe we'll leave it as it was, see if we can close back below this yellow line. But again, this doesn't really speak to huge risk-off moments just yet. So what's the stock market doing? Well, again, as I kind of said right at the beginning of the video, nothing's really out of the ordinary here, right? Bitcoin is trading sideways in its range, so that's fine. It's still above all bullish levels of support, although we have just wicked that yellow horizontal that I showed you. So that's the first sign of alarm. But all the while we're above this upper sloping red one, I have no problem with this trade whatsoever. The S&P 500 getting into that time where we would expect to see a pullback into the cycle low, right? So how low down it comes is anybody's guess. Same is true of the NASDAQ, right? Monster trade so far, but I think it's about that time where we could cut this trade and go back to neutral, waiting to attack again once we get down into that cycle low window at the end of the month. Notice how the Dow Jones is pushing its way up into this level. Now I've been talking on and off about possibly getting a rejection and rollover into the end of the month before then we can attack and come out of here and a break above this box. I think will be a long from camel. So consider that one called out well ahead of time. Notice how the VIX, again, a lot of people have been talking about a massive VIX spike. It's just not here yet, is it? So I think we can still see whilst the cycle tops in the S&P, I think we can see a little bit lower. Then we'll get a pop up into the end of the month, into that cycle low. And then I think it's time for the VIX to really, really dive down significantly lower. Apple hanging right around the all time high break. So we'll see what can happen here. All the while we're above the blue and yellow support, then I'll continue to push this long. Tesla, monster trade so far. Some level of pullback into the end of the month will be perfectly to be expected. But then I think it's time to blast off and do Tesla things once more. So right until we're wrong. And the last thing I wanted to point out was I've been talking about this gold short for a while. I said, if we lose this upward slope and blue support line, I'm going to enter a short on gold. And that's exactly what's happened. If I flip this upside down, it becomes super easy to see it, doesn't it? Right. This is clearly a breakout. So on the inverted chart, here it is. So I'm currently short gold. 
targeting the end of the month for that cycle low and then we'll look to cover this short and flip long possibly if we can break out of this downward sloping red resistance line. So all in all, not really anything has changed, has it? We're still in an uptrend for the stock market. We know we're coming up to those cycle lows for the stocks at the end of the month. We also know Bitcoin continues to do Bitcoin things, continues to hold the upward sloping red support line, continues to make its way down towards that cycle low. And once we get there, once we get into the end of the month, once we get to those cycle lows, it'll be time to go full aggression again. And I don't see any reason at the moment why we couldn't see ultra, ultra bullish price action coming out of those cycle lows. Once we get there, I'll be talking about making sure we know where our invalidation comes. I'll be talking about how to manage the risk out of those cycle lows. But for now, I think it's time to just relax, enjoy the weather, be patient. I've, as you can see, continue to push my positions. I'm not adding any positions until we get to those cycle lows, but the cycle lows work. Somebody asked me, Father Cryptmas, shout out Father Cryptmas, by the way. He was asking me just a minute ago, why these cycles work? Could I, could I make a video on why the cycles work? And I had to be frank, I think I've said this before as well, I don't know why they work, okay? There's some speculation that ranges from they're influenced by the futures and the options cycles and expiries. There are some speculation that it is entirely driven by human psychology. And there is also some outside of the box type thinkers that think this is entirely driven by the moon cycles. <laughs> so I don't know, nobody really knows. But one thing we do know is they work, okay? They work, I trade from them. I think I got them from Bob Lucas, uh, adapted them slightly, but I got mine from Bob Lucas. Bob Lucas, I believe, got his cycle uh, system from Charles Nenner. So people use them. I think Charles Nenner used to work at Goldman Sachs and uh, gave out the cycles and recommendations to Goldman Sachs traders. I believe that's, that's the truth. Don't take that for gospel, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. So people have used cycles in markets for a long time. And as, as I said to Father Christmas at the time, I don't need to know why they work as long as they work. And I certainly have proven that they do work over and over again on this channel. I don't like to do what Bob Lucas does. Bob Lucas only uses the cycles. I like to combine them with trend line breaks as well. I find that that over time has given me a much better edge, a much sharper edge. It enables me to get in and out of positions and manage risk around those trend lines more effectively than I can with just the cycle. But to each their own. Unfortunately, I can't answer your question as to why they work. I don't know why they work. I don't think anyone knows why they work, but they do. And that's all that matters. So anyway, until next time, look after yourselves, take care from me, enjoy the rest of your week and all the best. Cheers. Bye.